Hi guys, welcome back to Coastal Clownfish. And in today's episode, we're gonna hatch ourselves some Artemia, AKA brine shrimp, or sea monkeys. Now I've taken the liberty of cleaning these aquamedic reactors out. I just use chlorine or tap water, kills everything, makes it pretty sterile and ready to go. If you don't clean it out, you might get some sort of um, contamination, which is normally a big factor with hatching or culturing your own uh, planktons and so forth. But these aquamedic ones work really well for brine shrimp, rotifers, and phytoplankton. The phytoplankton one you will get with a light attached to it. These reactors, they hold approximately three litres. We use artificial salt water, otherwise known sometimes as ASW. You can get that from your local fish shop. We haven't found a huge difference between a few brands of salts, but we do use the aquaforest salt for the moment. And there's a big range of salt levels. We like to run our salt levels at a salinity of 1.015. No particular reason, we just find what works best for us. There's a big range you can run at. Now, hatching usually takes approximately 36 hours to 48 hours, depending on the temperature. The higher the temperature, the quicker it'll hatch. The lower the temperature, the slower it'll take to hatch. So if you're impatient, a little like us, you probably want a little bit of warmth in your water. Also, different brands play a big factor in the hatch rates. We've tried a few brands in the past, and one of the brands that we find really works for us is the Ocean Nutrition Artemia eggs, the brine shrimp eggs. Good hatch rate, try to get your oxygen, your air, quite at a consistent rate, not too high, but not too low either, otherwise you want the eggs to be tumbling. If they don't tumble and they might settle at the bottom, you'll have a problem with them hatching, so therefore you'll have a less of a hatch rate and you'll have a lot of your eggs sitting in your brine or your artemia when you come to extract that artemia out, which we'll show you in a couple of days, how to do that. The amount of eggs you put in, we like to have it quite dense. So we put quite a bit in. I don't know if you're going to have much of a difference between the hatch rates depending on how much brine chimp or artemia, artemia eggs you put into it. I'd imagine you would have a difference. So if you put too much artemia eggs into each chamber or reactor at a time, you will have an issue with your hatch rate. Uh, oxygen plays a big part, they do need to breathe and they do consume a lot of oxygen within the chamber. With this setup now and running, this is the kind of effect you kind of really want to achieve with your air tumbling. And we can revisit, I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit and show you a bit closer. There you go, nothing is sitting on the bottom. So we should get a pretty good hatch rate with this. We'll see what it's like in two days time once they've hatched. Here we are two days later, and you might notice the brine shrimp or artemia has changed color. That's an indication that a lot have hatched. And we'll go through the steps on how to extract the artemia from the reactors and leave or separate from the eggs. 
Separating the Artemia or brine shrimp from the eggs and extracting it from the reactor can be a little bit of a timely process. The best way we found is to cover up the brine shrimp or the chambers. And what that does, it makes it dark. And what a lot of people didn't know is brine shrimp and a lot of plankton are attracted to light. So by covering it up and leaving the base exposed to the light, doesn't need to be much lighter than normal um, room lighting. It can be quite, even quite dull. But by leaving it this light, just at the bottom, allows the Artemia to find its way to the base of the reactors. You can see in the bottom of the reactor, there is movement underneath the lining of where I've covered it up. That's all your live brine shrimp. Any eggs you see that may be at the, right at the bottom could possibly be the unhatched eggs. There's a couple of ways we use our brine shrimp. One of the ways is we bottle some brine shrimp, some live brine shrimp with new artificial salt water, so it's quite clean, and we refrigerate it so we can use it for the next couple of days. The other way we use a brine shrimp, when we have brine shrimp left over after we have collected a few bottles on each batch, we will then collect some live what's left, and that gets fed the same day we do the hatch. Now we always let go of the very first section of the chamber because it's going to be the eggs. The eggs that didn't hatch. So you can see it's coming out and then it gets a given colour. Then we pinch the hose and then collect a quite dense amount of brine shrimp per bottle. As you can see, it's very dense and that gets filled up with clean, fresh, artificial salt water. And that gets stored, and it keeps them in good condition and healthy to feed for the next few days. What people didn't know also is by putting a lot of the plankton into a refrigerator, it puts it into a, a sleep state. So it slows the metabolism down, and they won't exhaust themselves and utilize energy because the first, realistically, the first three hours of a brine shrimp hatching is the most nutritious time. So that's when you want to capture the brine shrimp, but we can't always do that. Now we have our brine shrimp in our containers with our clean artificial salt water. It's time for them to go into the fridge. But before we do that, what we found is important is to put in some filter floss that keeps the oxygen in the container so it allows them to breathe while they are still in a sleepy state and still healthy and nutritious for when we want to feed them in the next couple of days. The shrimp that is left is then captured. I normally use a sieve and the reason because I use a sieve is I don't really want to get a lot of the water or liquid that the brine shrimp has been sitting in for the last couple of days. You could imagine the amount of ammonia and waste that is in that water. So I sift it out and it enables me to keep the brine shrimp in our jug of clean salt water for the period of the day. So I can just feed and tip this in to all the fry, we feed the, all the systems.
We'll let these guys munch down on their brine shrimp. As you can see, they absolutely love this stuff. So while we're watching, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to tell your mates, let's get it around, and we'll catch you around on the next one. Thanks for watching.